everybody, welcome back to Dead Time with the Groffs. Thank you for joining us. This next story is really sad and a compelling, kind of creepy narrative that has kind of played out over the last couple of years. Uh, and just knowing the story and watching it, I discovered this over just scoping YouTube. And uh, true crime, uh, unsolved missing case of this young girl. And uh, her name is Sophia uh, Reeder, and she was 15 years old when she went missing. I really want you to see this, see if you can give any insight from uh, your abilities and see if you can tap into something else to try to figure out maybe where she is. But let's watch the video and uh, let us know what you think too, or if you have any clues or hints or any information you can actually help this family at the same time as we're trying to do too. So let's take a look. Right now at 5.30, we are speaking exclusively with the parents of a missing teenager who fear that she may be the victim of human trafficking. Her mom and dad haven't seen her in more than a week and they are worried sick about her safety. And tonight, they are speaking only to Local 10's Nikki Mohan. She joins us live from Fort Lauderdale with more. It was very hard for these parents to come forward, but they are terrified. Where is their daughter? Ten days have gone by and Sophie Reeder is still missing. Flyers are all over the Croissant Park neighborhood in Fort Lauderdale as they are looking for any clues. On the night of May 20th, 2017, Sophie Reeder left her Fort Lauderdale home and was seen on surveillance footage walking down West Davie Boulevard in Fort Lauderdale. That surveillance footage of Sophie coming down the street with her headphones on is the last known sighting of her. The night before Sophie Reeder went missing, she was pacing the floor of her father's Fort Lauderdale home. Around 11.30 p.m. he told her to go to bed and the next morning when he woke up, his daughter wasn't home. Sophie's father, Patrick Reeder, originally thought that Sophie went to visit friends or visit her mom. But after calling around to friends and family who said that they hadn't seen Sophie, her father filed a missing persons report with the police. I went into her room, I saw a candle burning and her computer on her bed, but she wasn't in her bedroom. Patrick Reeder, Sophie's father said. It was also discovered that there was around $300 in cash found in her room, which paired with the fact that she left a candle lit, led investigators to believe that she planned on returning back to the home at some point. It wasn't uncommon for her to go for walks, so we believe she was meeting with a friend, but we are not sure, said Fort Lauderdale lead detective on the case, Jennifer St. John. Sophie's father also noticed that Sophie had a calendar on her wall with the date May 19th X'd out the day before she disappeared. But no one is sure how significant that may be. Police believe Sophie was experiencing undiagnosed depression and anxiety. And according to the Missing Pieces Network, an organization that helps families of missing persons, Sophie was extremely vulnerable because she was spending a lot of time online due to her attending school virtually. And speaking of Sophie's computer, her computer activity revealed a few more pieces of information. She had been visiting adult websites specifically sites where older men pay to have relationships with younger women, or sugar daddy sites, which led investigators to fear that Sophie may have been abducted and forced into human trafficking. With Detective Jennifer St. John saying, it's very prevalent in South Florida and unfortunately it's so easy to get entangled into it and not even know necessarily right away that you're involved in it until you're so deep into it that you don't know how to get out. And when Nicole, Sophie's mother, searched her room, she became even more concerned about her daughter's well-being. When I went through her room, I saw things like stockings and garter belts, booze, drugs. I'm just surprised that she would even think about bringing that to my house. She picked the wrong crowd to hang out with, and I totally believe social media and being on the computer and talking to the wrong people led to her disappearance said Nicole. Authorities believe Sophie left her home around 12.45 a.m. on May 20th. Her cell phone pinged in front of a house nearby around 3 a.m. when she tried to make a phone call. Records indicate that the phone stayed in that area until around 9 a.m. when it was either turned off or died. Authorities noticed that there was an apartment complex near where Sophie's phone last pinged, and they later learned that Sophie knew someone that lived at that apartment complex. Eventually, investigators received a search warrant for the apartment complex, but it was later reported that they found no information that helped further the investigation into where Sophie was. Since then, four years have gone by, and despite a vigorous search for Sophie, 
she still remains missing. And as of today, no one has been arrested in relation to her disappearance. Over the years, authorities have continued investigating the case with hopes that someone with information would eventually come forward, but investigators fear that Sophie could be a victim of human trafficking or an online predator. The National Center of Missing and Exploited Children created an age-enhanced photo of what Sophie may look like today. At the time she disappeared, she had a heavy presence online and she had two phones as well. One of the phones was left behind along with the $300 that I mentioned earlier, and the other phone was with her, but at some point it was either turned off or died. Sophie stands five feet, one inches tall, and at the time of her disappearance, she weighed around 120 pounds. She is known to change her hairstyle and has a burn mark behind her left elbow. Her hair is originally brown and so are her eyes. And at one point in time, she mentioned that she wanted to change her name to Ella. Anyone with information is urged to call the Fort Lauderdale Police Department. Their number will be listed right here or your local authority. And I will also be listing her agency case number down here below. When I watch those types of cases, there's like a different part of my brain that completely opens up. Yeah. So. I mean, immediately what I pick up on with her, unfortunately, is that she was definitely misled. I do feel she was in conversation with somebody. And then I started visually seeing, like, as she was, as they were showing the footage of her walking down the street, I immediately saw a pickup truck come up next to her, but that she was anticipating meeting up with this person. And I saw it being a dark red color um, there's two gentlemen in the vehicle, which I don't think she anticipated. I think she thought maybe one would be. Um, one was a light colored skin. The other one was darker colored skin. So there's two gentlemen in the car. And then I saw her get in. And the next thing that I saw, the next vision that I had was there was this big chain link fence with like a lot of plantation, like a lot of greenery and stuff almost as if you were pulling into what looks like a not like a, a greenhouse or like what are those things called where you buy plants and things like that it's like a greenhouse where they have all the plants and stuff like that yeah I there's a lot of like plants on the ground and there was this big chain fence and i saw the truck pulling in and then i got this weird name like wax like i don't i know it sounds strange but i don't i'm not familiar with where she's at but there's something like Wax B or Wax something with the name Wax in it. So whether it be a street name, W-A-X, there's something about W-A-X that comes to mind with her. And, you know, the number and everything up there, I would be compelled to call that and see if I can give the authorities any other information. Well, we've, we've actually worked a lot with detectives, police in the past, especially you have on yeah. unsolved missing cases or any other information that has gone wrong for families. So I think this is a great uh, case to explore a little bit more. And if we can help find or locate where she is, I think that's, you know, that's the bottom line. That's what the family wants to do. The father, the mother, they're both, they've been try at this for years and they're not giving up. And you know, a lot of great people like this on the showman who's been kind of dissecting the case and stuff like that and other, uh, YouTubers and TikToks we've come across. I've read uh, articles on this recently and I really wanted to get your insight on it because maybe you can give a couple of puzzle pieces to help the detectives on the case that this is still unsolved. This is missing. She hasn't been found. Uh, Sophia is still out there and um, we don't truly know where she is, but we're just coming across this case for the first time. I thought it was super compelling and if it helps, you know, any information you're giving right now uh, out there and if anybody knows any more uh, insight or information you can share with us, please comment down below. Um, definitely write us. Right here is our email, uh, deadtimegroffs at gmail.com. And we wanna hear uh, any information you have or any other videos or um, anything that you can offer for them. And again, here's the number. You can see it on the screen right there. If you have more information that might maybe direct the police, uh, please give them a call. I think I'm going to give them a call. I mean, that's the that's the crazy part about all this is like I'm flooded with information right now. So if the family, if I can somehow get a hold of the family or even just call the number, I think hopefully with my ability, I can lead them to some sort of clues or 
um, the next step in finding her. So I think we should do a follow-up video of this. Uh, we'll do another video based on Sophia and uh, we'll let you know what we come up with in the near future and hopefully we can try to help solve this unsolved missing case that's been going on for a very long time right now. So stay tuned and we will try to figure out some more information and we'll come back to you uh, once we have that. And um, any other insights you can give, I guess, for anyone that's watching? Um, I would say anybody who's familiar with this location, definitely definitely the street name or the, the WAX of some sort. There's a big, it, and I don't know if it's an abbreviation, WAX, but there's something about a very big, what looks like a greenhouse type, not the building a greenhouse, but like the plants and this, this big chain link fence that would open up and this red pickup truck with these two gentlemen inside had entered this first. The weird thing is, is I don't think she went far. I don't think this is a case where they took her out of state even. I feel like she was she stayed local, um, which makes it even more compelling to try to help. So hopefully I could get a hold of the family or we can contact the number and hopefully help. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for more uh, videos to come. So this is Dead Time with the Gruffs. Have a great night. You know, look around you, stay safe out there, and um, don't forget to look under the bed. Look under the bed. Take care. Bye.